Kulminic alongside Lisa Roman. And it's a warm one, not a surprise in North Carolina. Temperature at kickoff, 85 degrees. It'll feel like 93 for Jess McDonald and this Courage team. It's a chance to get back on track after the loss to Washington last week. This is a huge opportunity for North Carolina. We're seeing a little bit different in their lineup. Jess McDonald now up top alongside Kristen Hamilton. Can those two combine together and be really creative? Cause a lot of trouble for Houston Dash's back line. Put a lot of pressure on Katie Naughton and Megan Oyster in those center back positions. This has been a house of horrors for the Dash. They're 0-5 all time here in Cary, North Carolina. Underway here on Saturday in NWSL. Billiter in the middle for this one. Their sixth game in charge in WSL. Ashley Varnes and Rebecca Luther are our ARs today, and Sean Tahini, our fourth official. Kelly Kurtz getting an early touch in that left center back position, as you highlighted earlier, Lisa, a bit of a different role for her. The ball there, up the side, to work in the midfield and get Salon going. Now James switching it right. Space for Merritt Mathias. Early ball in, picked out by Naughton for Houston, and now Gabby Siler on it. Taken away by a tackle from O'Sullivan. Michael, we're already seeing exactly what Paul Riley and the Courage want to do, the big switch of the field. It forces Houston shape to slide all the way on the other side. And for North Carolina, it's their outside backs. Merritt Mathias, we saw her getting really high on the far flank. And Carson Pickett on this near side. With that switch that comes, those players will be open on the weak side. Pickett now playing it for Diane Caldwell, making her fourth star of the year. Abby Urseg leaving for the Olympics, so that necessitated the move of Kurtz from the right center back position to the left. Caldwell comes in at right center. Paul Riley saying he really likes Caldwell's ability to read the game. Getting used to the speed of the game has been the challenge, though, for her, according to Riley. Across the board, players new to the NWSL, that's what they say, the speed of play, the physicality is what's so jarring when they first step on the field. However, uh, they, they think that Caldwell's going to do great stepping into that position, and she's partnered up with Kaylee Kurtz there, who has so much experience. He's been learning from Abby Urseg and Abby Dahlkemper, and she's Kurtz just really working on her distribution out of that center back. Early ball from Ricaro towards McDonald, and there's 50 for Jess McDonald. Beautiful ball from Ricaro, and McDonald was there. And it's going to be disallowed. Drag was up on McDonald, despite the smoke blowing here in Carey. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. What a great ball from Ricaro, though. Everyone's so excited inside that stadium, and rightfully so. They haven't seen a play like that with Jess McDonald on the end of it in a few games now. They've been waiting for Jess McDonald to create a spark up top. And just three minutes into this match, Michael, she's already making her stamp, getting out on the front foot and putting Houston on their heels. And even though it didn't count after a frustrating game last week, it has to be good for Jeff McDonald to see the ball hit the back of the net. Turnover to Salon, played for McDonald, cut out by Oyster for Houston. Jasmine Spencer all the way back in midfield. Good ball to find some space and it'll go out for a throw. Take a look at this ball. It is ultimately called back, but a heck of a cross coming in here. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then Jeff McDonald just sitting on the back shoulder of Naughton, and she is offside on that play. Very close with the Oyster, though. That was a step. Ball Give into the box. McDonald will track it down. We're in the armband today for Paul Riley's club. Pa Paul Riley talking about Jess McDonald in, in our phone call with him, Michael, saying that He's expecting a lot from her. He needs her to step up in these moments, really be the leader in the attacking end for the Courage. And no matter who she's partnered up there with, whether it's Hamilton or Speck, she needs to be the one creating and dictating the flow offensively. And we're already seeing that tonight from her. So pressure well received from McDonald. Kurt's now playing it forward. Combination for O'Sullivan. Works it left for Pickett. 
Early ball from Pickett towards McDonald, headed away by Oyster for Houston. Siler fouling for it for the dash, but it'll be O'Sullivan keeping possession. And we talked about the change in the center. Kerry Ricaro, who came in and I thought played a good second half against Washington, gets the start. She played that ball to McDonald for the goal that was disallowed. She does the dirt deserve this start today, Kerry. Rocaro sitting at the top of that box. She's one of the two tens for Paul Riley's squad, but hey, that midfield box, they rotate around horizontally, diagonally, vertically. So we'll see Rocaro in many different spots on the field, but she'll definitely sit higher looking to join in with McDonald and Hamilton. Turnover from Oyster to McDonald, played back in for McDonald and good defensive work from Pricelot coming over to cover and break that up as that was dangerous off the turnover. As soon as North Carolina loses the ball, they are pressing so high on Houston, making it so difficult for the dash to play out. O'Sullivan, combination with Pickett now. Early ball towards the captain, McDonald. Lots of space on the right side of the box for McDonald. Plays it across, deflected it out for the first corner of the match. It'll come from the right side, and it'll come from Carson Pickett, who leads the league with 46 corner kicks taken on the air. Not only is Carson Pickett so good at set piece deliveries like these corner kicks, but she just lofted that ball in long diagonal, finding Jess McDonald on the weak side. That's a big switch that's really going to work for North Carolina today. This is the Courage team that we normally see, that we didn't see last week. The serve from Pickett towards McDonald, headed out by Groom. And we'll do it again from the other side. Off the deflection, McDonald won in a corner. It'll actually be a goal kick. Great defensive shape from Groom. Marking up against Jess McDonald there. Not an easy one to mark on those corner kicks. McDonald is tall, physical, aggressive in the air. Shea Groom has it covered. Lindsay Harris, who had the dubious distinction of giving up two goals on single thought, allowing a shot on goal as both of Chicago's goals were own goals. A result that Lindsay Harris did not take lightly. The coach Paul Riley said she focused a lot. She watched a lot of game film on where she could better position herself in those moments. So if there is a mistake within the 10 field players, Harris is able to clean that up for her teammates and truly be the last line of defense before the ball goes in the back of the net. It's her first regular season start for the Dash, breaking Jen Campbell's streak of 71 straight. Of course, Campbell in Tokyo for the Olympics, so a good reason to have to make a change in goal. And Lindsay Harris trying to learn for start number two. Ogle playing it now for Hansen. Early ball up the line, a nice wind in space for Gamera Stevens. Over there to clean it up is Kurtz for North Carolina. That is where Houston Dash and McMahon Gomera Stevens will find the space. It's when Pickett pushes up on this near flank. The space in behind her will open up for Gomera Stevens to float in there. And those long balls just need to be timed better for the dash, but that'll come as they realize the pace of play on the turf and also how quickly North Carolina can recover. Hansen will once again trigger for the dash here in the eighth minute. Too tall. For Latsko. But one back by the dash for Hansen. Combination with Gomera Stevens. Crossed in towards the middle. Headed high once by Kurtz and then caught by Casey Murphy. And Casey Murphy initially off her line as that cross coming in. Dangerous position for her. She's not often out of position. She's able to grab that one though and recover. James turning it over nearly to Spencer. It's one of those players you always have to have one eye on when you're in possession, facing goal or partially facing goal. Jasmine Spencer can catch up to you in a hurry. Stolen by Latsko. Played through now. Early shot and a goal for the dash. Off the turnover, Houston takes the lead. Houston Dash sitting back for the first nine minutes of this game, letting North Carolina play around. 
And then it's Shea Groom kisses to the fans there. Well deserved. This ball is picked off right in the midfield, sneaking up on James and a beautiful little ball from Latsko to find Groom. And nice. Groom taking this one from the top of the box, making it really difficult for Casey Murphy to close down that space for her. Well played. Nice win to mark her 100th league game for Shea Groom. Early ball, Houston once more, and vital tackle there as Latsko was in a foot race there with Kurtz. She back to her feet. Houston Deputy Knights going to play for number six, Shea Groom. Kaylee Kurtz the replacing her divot there. Veronica making Latska. sure the grass stays nice and even and green. This series has been a high scoring one. Four of the last five winners have scored three goals or more. Asked Paul Rowley about that. There was something about these styles that just made for high scoring games. And he said he thought it would be a tight one. We've had a goal and a goal disallowed so far through 10 minutes. So it has been pretty open in the early stages. It's not just that the play has been open and really sound from both North Carolina when they're on the ball and then Houston we saw quickly picking off that pass but both of these teams are really hungry to get goals they're coming off losses and not just close losses but losses that really hurt both of these sides so this North Carolina team is really excited to get back on the board they're playing at home tonight and they're eager to make their mark on this season turnover by Ogle Ricaro trying to slide it to Hamilton off to the question, it goes out for a corner kick. Carrie Ricaro there. Making her second start of the season. Let's see what Carson Pickett can do. Jess McDonald has been active early, certainly. I have to figure she's the number one target on this set piece as well. A good sign to have McDonald so active early in the game. It shows she's really engaged. The service from Pickett comes in low, easily cleared out. O'Sullivan keeps it in play, combines with Pickett. Space now for O'Sullivan, and not on the same page there with Bracaro, who goes out for a goal kick. Denise O'Sullivan doing that little give and go. She's one of the players in the midfield for Paul Riley and this Courage squad that can get the ball at her feet and just glide forward with it instead of sending that ball again wide trying to find Rocaro. Can O'Sullivan slide towards the middle more with the ball on her foot and try to put a shot and force Harris to make a save? Hansen trying to go direct. It's a nice ball, too, to pick out Gomera Stevens here on the right side. Shakes her way into the box, looking for help, trying to cut back on the left foot. Gomera Stevens holding the ball up nicely and finding Hansen. Stood up, though. Well done there, coming back from Havana Salon. And then draws the foul on Haley Hansen. The initial ball from Houston finding Gomera Stevens was in exactly the right spot, that open pocket that opens up behind Pickett. And then Gomera Stevens just dodging inside the 18. If she has the space on her left foot, she needs to be confident enough to strike it, whether it's a cross or a shot with that left foot. Lisa, both coaches talked about exploiting the wide spaces. They've been able to do so both ways in the first 13 minutes of this one. They definitely have us. This ball is now again back on the flank of the field. That's where the space is for both of these teams. Shea Groom, the goal scorer in the ninth minute, assisted by Veronica Latsko. It was right for Hansen. Latsko with her first assist of the year. Second goal for Groom. And now Ricardo causing trouble again. Advantage initially given by Alex Biller, then the whistle blows for the free kick. And the Ogle. The offending party there for Houston. A really nice job by Rocaro to stick tight with Ogle as Ogle is checking for that ball. Rocaro just sitting on her back shoulder, applying so much pressure so Ogle can't even trap the ball cleanly. 
That's the high intensity, high pressure from North Carolina that we're used to seeing. And now it's back with Rocaro getting that starting spot. She's looking to make this a habit to be in the starting 11. You would think on paper, playing someone who's mostly played center back in the attacking mid wouldn't make sense. But that aggressiveness and the ability to win the ball is so important in this system. The serve from Pickett. Volleyed high, second ball headed by Siler. Not decisively cleared as O'Sullivan will pick it up from North Carolina and find the feet of Pickett. Another early serve from Carson Pickett. Headed out by Katie Naughton. Second ball battled for and won by Mathias in the box. Finally cleared again by the dash and won again by the courage, O'Sullivan. Off the deflection is Mathias. Michael, you can see what North Carolina is trying to do. They have Hamilton and McDonald sitting on the back shoulders of the Dash's center backs, facing towards their own goal. They're looking to get in behind, find those balls over the top. Early ball from Mathias, deflected. Chance here, and a goal! Kristen Hamilton ties it up in the 16th minute. Wide play again, Lisa. The space is on the flanks of the field. We saw it before, and now this time it's Matthias getting across in. It's not cleared out cleanly by Houston Dash, and then Hamilton just waiting on the far side of the box as it bounces to her, and a nice finish by her as Harris tries to close down Hamilton. Yeah, really great finish, kind of on the off bounce there to get the left foot high, volley it past Lindsey Harris. So. Once again, we have a high scoring game between North Carolina and Houston. 1 1, 16 minutes in. It wasn't the most clinical touch by Hamilton, but it didn't need to be in that moment. It was in that sense, it was just getting your foot on the ball on the volley and redirecting it back towards where it came, knowing that Harris was coming at her from the center of the goal. The last time these two teams met, in North Carolina during the fall series, a 4-3 North Carolina win. And then when they met in the regular season here in 2019, Kristen Hamilton scored four. Ogle. Two teams that really struggled to score last week. Finding life easier so far here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Throw in for Kurtz and the courage here in the 18th minute. Really exciting first half so far, Michael, from two teams that did not have a lot of offensive power last week in their matchups and now different teams we are seeing both from North Carolina and from Houston a lot more aggression and clinical finishing in their final third it's it's the pass the final pass the cross that's coming in the through ball to groom from Latsko that it is those finishing touches the cherry on top for these teams that the coaches have been looking to see looking to find in this regular season Something that James Clarkson said he wanted to see more from Veronica Latska was playing that center forward position and kind of holding play up and making plays. She did that beautifully to set up Groom for the first goal. And not only Latska making the plays, but also helping the dash move the ball up the field. Can she be the outlet higher up? Nice combination to find McDonald on the right side. She'll loft across towards Hamilton, but easy stuff there at the near post for Harris. Hamilton really the only courage player in the mix late runners from Salon at the top of the box, but with McDonald pulls so far wide to get that cross in, the Courage need players like Ricaro and Salon crashing the box alongside Hamilton just to have the numbers up. Ricaro. Caldwell will switch it left for Pickett. Gives possession away though, and a nice ball outside of the foot to try and pick out Gamera Stevens, but Kurtz to the rescue for the Courage. 
Kurtz sliding over from her typical right center back position to this left center back position is so she can fill in behind Pickett when Pickett pushes so far forward up the field. Kurtz can slide over and be that cover for Pickett in that open area space. And then Caldwell sliding into the right center back position to clean up anything down the middle. Jasmine Spencer, broken up by Ricaro once again. Michael, you mentioned it's interesting to have Ricaro, a traditional center back, playing in that attacking box midfield position for North Carolina, but that's what she's there to do, be a big defensive threat in North Carolina's middle of the field and apply so much pressure on Houston Dash's midfield. So as soon as North Carolina loses the ball, it's Ricaro who's stepping really high to put pressure and organize defensive shape higher up the field. At least I think the other thing it's done is it's given Denise O'Sullivan more freedom to get on the ball and get forward. It does. Denise O'Sullivan can defend. I mean, any player that plays in the midfield for Paul O'Reilly can be on both sides of the ball. But for a player like Denise O'Sullivan, you want the ball at her feet. You want her making runs into the attack, looking to find the ball and combined with her forwards. And pairing her up with Rocaro is such a nice job by Riley to, to see that relationship that those two can have. Denise O'Sullivan at last update had 23 touches. That was the second most for the Courage. That's exactly what Paul Riley wants. The player that has the most touches is Kurtz. She'll go left for O'Sullivan, right on cue. The two players that North Carolina wants to have the most touches, it's Kurtz who can be a feeder out of that center back position, finding the midfielders, finding the forwards, really distributing the ball from the back. And then O'Sullivan, a player that just glides with the ball at her feet and can be such a threat. Early ball from Salon. Hamilton will track it down on the left side. Going to work. Looking for help from Pickett. She'll find it. First time ball from Pickett over McDonald's run. Spencer hustling for it. Crossed back in and caught in the six by Lindsay Harris. Houston doing a nice job defending on that build-up play from North Carolina. It was the quick transition, but immediately we saw the dash getting back behind the ball and creating their defensive shape to pick up players that were running into the box. Early chip for Jasmine Spencer. Tracked by Caldwell back to Murphy. And now Kurtz will regroup. Shea Groom in the ninth minute from Latsko. Kristen Hamilton unassisted in the 16th minute. Your goal so far here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Been an entertaining back and forth affair here as first place is on the line in the league. North Carolina enters in a three-way tie on 16 points. Houston can join them there. They're on 13 right now. One game today, three tomorrow. We'll preview those three matches at the break, by the way. Not in back for Harris. Under pressure from Hamilton, she will go long. He's all the way through to Caldwell and a whistle here. A foul against the Courage as Shea Groom is pushed. Katie Naughton will trigger this free kick for Houston. Katie Naughton, a big player for the Houston Dash. She didn't have the best game against Chicago, but that didn't matter. Her leadership, her maturity is what sets her above and beyond and what makes her so special for James Clarkson and his squad. She's a player that will get up on set pieces and look to dictate the tempo coming out of the back. Was involved in two of those own goals on Sunday against Chicago. And James Clarkson said that she really showed maturity and leadership, apologizing to the team in the locker room, taking responsibility for it. And certainly she is going to grow from this and continue to be, as you said, a rock for this dash back four. Murphy's chip, nice ball to pick out Pickett. Are unable to find a combination there and out for a throw in. Courage sliding their entire unit over to this near side. 
to squeeze in Houston Dash. You can see the midfield box all the way on this side, the vertical side of the field. Solvin wins it and good thought there for McDonald delayed off for Hamilton. Oyster was a step quicker. Ogle for Groom. It comes for Prysock. Pressured by James. She'll go for Spencer. Groom. Much better movement of the ball from Houston Dash. Turned over to Ricaro in the end once again. I spoke too soon, Michael. <laughs> Ricaro is, this is what she does. Her second interception of this game. More to come, I'm sure. On the ball right now, Carrie Ricaro. Left for Pickett. Chips it into space. It's a nicely weighted ball for Kristen Hamilton. Early cross, looking for McDonald. Touch through. It will come all the way through for Prysock. Kristen Hamilton making a di diagonal run along the dash's back line to receive that over-the-top through ball. It's a really good look for North Carolina. That's how they'll get in behind the dash's back line. Let's go laying off. Gomera Stevens. Space now for Makame Gomera Stevens to go up the line. Blocked by Carson Pickett for a throw in. Only Hansen's been busy. Let's go. Nice cross from Latsko, volleyed away. Second ball, won by Kurtz in the air over Latsko. Pickett will just bang it long. Gets possession back to the dash. Here's Hansen. Cross towards the pony spot. Murphy with the punch and collision there. Foul immediately called. So it was Murphy against Groom there. Scary moment for both players. The North Carolina Courage returning to Salem Stadium Saturday. Certainly no intent there, the but high speed collision. That ball being serviced in directly in between Groom and Murphy. So as they both collapsed on the ball at the same time as the ball was getting there, they ran into each other. The Barmel Hoyle Wealth Management Group will be donating $50 to League Girls of North Carolina. So a stoppage here in the 27th minute. Both teams have a goal on the board. Shea Groom scoring in the ninth minute for Houston, assisted by Veronica Latsko, and then Kristen Hamilton the other way in the 16th minute. Chance for both teams to hydrate, regroup a little bit on this warm Saturday evening in Cary, North Carolina. See Paul Riley there giving some instructions on shape, and James Clarkson also giving some words to his defense in particular, Kenny Naughton making an oyster there. Good to see Casey Murphy back on her feet. Both players knew that collision was coming too. That wasn't a blindside thing at all. They both, both sacrificed going for the ball. It was a, a nicely played ball in by Hansen and just placed so delicately between them and as Grooms going for the header and Murphy looking to punch the ball out. Almost exact timing. The three collided, the ball, Murphy, and Groom. A nice hydration break for both squads here. It is a hot, sticky evening. I see James Clarkson wants to talk more to his team. Casey Murphy nodding, saying, I'm okay. Shea Groom still being helped on the field. See referee Alex Builder has a card in hand. I'm not sure that's a cardable offense. Just going going for a 50-50 cross. I don't think there was any intent there. Groom wasn't deliberately trying to mow down Murphy by any means. Her, if anything, Groom's eyes were completely on the ball. As you said, if that ball gets there a second earlier, that's a goal. And it certainly isn't a foul. It does. Murphy ultimately winning the ball as she punches it out. And then the 
looks like Groom's head goes into Murphy's outstretched hands. There's the yellow shown to Shea Groom. Her third booking of the year. Houston leads the league, by the way. That's 21 yellow cards shown to the dash. So she's two away from a suspension. And also worth Young mentioning, Haley Hansen is on four. So first. her next yellow won her a one-game suspension. Certainly the Houston sideline putting the case that we were just making that wasn't anything malicious in what Shea Groom did there on that play by any stretch of the imagination. But Alex Billiter saw it differently. We have our first booking of the match. It can be considered a careless run by Groom knowing that Murphy was coming out for the ball, not keeping an eye on where Murphy was in that position. The goalkeeper does always have the advantage because Murphy got the ball first and then Groom ran into Murphy. It's seen as an offense. Back underway here as Murphy will go short for Kurtz. Michael Minnick, Lisa Roman here with you. Glad you've joined us for part of your Saturday wherever you are in the world. It's been a good first half hour between these two clubs fighting for first place. McDonald had a goal disallowed early. And steal back by the Courage in midfield. Left it comes for Pickett. Off the steal from Ricaro. Now Salon. Can't find a teammate. Nobody humming white either. Good read there by Emily Ogle in the midfield for the dash. As North Carolina's midfield players are dodging from left to right across the field. Ogle's doing a nice job of keeping her head on a swivel, understanding where O'Sullivan is, Salon, Ricaro to pick them up. Nice job by Ricaro to find Matthias on the right side. Matthias going to work on the end line, playing it across over everybody. Foot in from Hansen to knock it out for a throw in under pressure from Havana Salon. And so Sullivan's been busy in this first half. She'll take a throw in here short for McDonald and get it back. And former Dash players, McDonald and O'Sullivan. Let's go. Trying to turn the corner. Has a step on Ricaro. For help is Latsko. Finds it through Gamera Stevens. She gets by the challenges of her car on McDonald. Now loose on the right side. We'll cut back and look for help. Hanson returns it to Gamera Stevens. Ball in for Siler. Touch through looking for the run of Groom. Good thought, but Groom held her run. And the foul behind the play is Gamera Stevens got tangled with O'Sullivan. Free kick for the courage. Gomera Stevens finding herself on top of the ball, but faced up against Carson Pickett, who is such a strong defender. If Gomera Stevens can combine with Latsko, even Ogle in underneath of her, and then look to get the ball back in behind a little give and go just around Pickett, Gomera Stevens will have more freedom to get across in. Just 31% possession for Houston, but I think they're doing what they want to do offensively, which is get on the counter, get in some space like you were just saying, and test this depth, this courage back four. Houston does such a nice job in transition and moving quickly with the ball, but North Carolina knows that. They're aware of the quick transition from the dash, and they're looking to step on it quickly as soon as they lose the ball. Highlighted that right side of the defense with Caldwell and Matthias. They've done a nice job so far of keeping lid on Jasmine Spencer. Here is Matthias, who's cross set up the goal from Hamilton. Now a switch towards the left side, towards Ricaro. Pick it now in a dangerous spot. Tries to play the low driven ball. Oyster gets the first touch on it. Second ball cleared by Siler. Regroup now for Ricaro and North Carolina. James for O'Sullivan. Once it runs, so she can drop it back. Caldwell. Matthias. She was trying to pick out O'Sullivan there, but turns it over to Gamera Stevens. O'Sullivan wins it back, though. That's a really, really dangerous ball from Matthias on that big switch. It's almost a square ball, which makes it really easy for the dash to pick off. 
Omer Stevens just not able to capitalize on that pickoff. Matthias will try again, finds Salon. Plays it through beautifully for the run of Hamilton. Takes the shot and buries her second. But the flag is up on Kristen Hamilton. So the second goal disallowed for North Carolina here in the first 34 minutes. One for McDonald, one for Hamilton. Hamilton and McDonald just sitting on the back shoulder of the farthest dash player. That's Hamilton. pretty clear, yeah. Hamilton offside a step or so ahead, but really good finish from both of the goals called back for North Carolina due to offside. The first one coming from McDonald, really, really nice finish from her. And then that angle that Hamilton just put that ball away. Yes, no defenders on her because she was offside, but incredible finish. Out comes Murphy. Lisa, we saw this Courage team play last week. Their chances a lot of the times are offset pieces. Run a play, not creating a lot. So as you said, Yes, only one is counted, but you put three in the back of the net and you put your two forwards in dangerous opportunities multiple times. And compared to last week, Kristen Hamilton starting in that box midfield at the top in a 10 position. She's now partnered up top with Jess McDonald. Clearly, Paul Riley saw something in training this week, the partnership between those, the relationship, the rhythm that they were finding, making complementary runs in the attack, and it's, it's working for them tonight. And as you said, I think it's a ripple effect, right? Recaro steps up, plays a good 45 against Washington. You like what you see from her. You put her in that offensive midfield spot. That frees up Hamilton to go up front and take Haley Mason's spot. We build up here from the dash. It's Hansen. Seiler. Ogle. Continued on left. Allie Prysock. Against Salon. Keeps going, has a cross block by Matthias, heads it for herself. Ricaro over to clean up, but gives it away to Jasmine Spencer. Ogle for Seiler. Can't find Latsko this time. Out comes Murphy. That's where Houston needs to find Latsko when she's checking back for the ball, even though she has a defender on her back. If they can play it directly to her feet, trust that Latsko will keep the ball, shield the defender off of her, and then allow players to run off of her, whether she drops it back or is able to turn and find a, a player running towards the flank. Carl wants it out left. She will get it, but defended by Hanson, it goes out for a throw in off of the of Kerry Recaro. Sullivan gets a foot in. It will be North Carolina's ball off the hard work from Denise O'Sullivan. Now Sullivan's now one possession back for her team seven times in 37 minutes. McDonald centrally. Salon plays the one two with James. We'll work in Matthias on the right side against Jasmine Spencer. On the floor for James, touch inside. Good thought, but nobody home except for Megan Oyster in white. Oyster wants to go long, picks out Latsko. And a foul from Ricaro. And a warning from Alex Billiter. A smart foul by Ricaro is Houston looking to push in transition where they can be so dangerous. And Ricaro making a tough tackle there, allowing the Courage to get back behind the ball, set up shape, and defensively be really organized and really tight. That's one thing for Paul Riley he was focusing on throughout this game that they didn't do in their last match against Washington. It's having a good starting position defensively, not getting caught out of shape, not getting caught in those transition moments. And a smart play like that from Ricaro allows the Courage to read the game well in those transition moments and get back into a better defensive shape. We saw them the second goal last week, right? Mm -hmm. Andy Sullivan gets a steal. She's off of the races with Hatch, 2-1-2. Two -two, and it goes from North Carolina nearly tying the game when Ersig's set piece off the post to trailing 2 to nothing. Paul Riley asking his players not to think of two, three passes ahead, but four, five passes ahead to see if we lose the ball right now, where do I need to track back to get behind the ball and to stop the play from happening? Space for Prysock. The dash left back will take it. 
Leaves it inside for Groom, the goal scorer. Groom with a head of steam. We'll take the shot from deep, and that was always going high. Nearly saved by the gentleman with the symbols behind the goal, but <laughs> no problem for Casey Murphy. Shea Groom is so dangerous when she can receive the ball, turn and face up field when she's running at Caldwell and Kurtz in the back line, and they drop off and give her space. Groom will take a shot like that. Not the most on-target shot from Groom we've seen, but keep giving her chances like that, and she'll find her way into the back of the net on a shot. Mathias again with the early service, again for McDonald, but again Oyster wins. Salon. Now pick it. O'Sullivan, heavy touch, has to go back. Caldwell. Our fellow Irish international. Going right for Matthias. Now James. O'Sullivan wants it, she'll get it. James for Ricaro in tight spaces. Turns out well. Finds O'Sullivan. Switch finished left for Pickett. Pickett shakes Gamera Stevens, gets the cross in towards McDonald, too far. Price stock on the back end will clear for Houston. Katie Naughton and Megan Oyster center backs for the dash are doing such a nice job of keeping an eye on Jess McDonald. McDonald is floating between them, trying to find the pockets, and Naughton and Oyster are just handing her off, keeping her in close reach so they can always be one step away from her if the ball comes flying into McDonald. Switch from Pickett. Well saved by Matthias. Or was it? <laughs> she certainly thought she <laughs> saved it. It will be a throw in for Houston. North Carolina playing all the way to the sideline, using as much space on the field as they can. And with those big switches, they're trying to force the dash to slide over, which opens up the weak side forward. That time just playing a little too close to the touchline. Heard somebody from the Houston sideline yell, or excuse me, from the North Carolina sideline yell tempo up. You can see Houston's kind of taking the water off the boil a little bit. 1-1 one, one on the road for the first half. I think they would take that. And it's been a lot of North Carolina on the ball in the last five or ten minutes for sure. And for James Clarkson, he really likes when his team scores first. That's what they did tonight with Shea Groom, getting that first goal on the board to get that lead, though they're not able to keep it. Just a few minutes later, Hamilton notching on in the back of the net. But for the Houston Dash, they know they can score. They know they can take it and, and go up with that lead. It's a mental thing. And I think that was one of the many frustrating things for Paul Riley last week and also for James Clarkson was you get yourself in a good position, give up a goal right before the half in the case of Riley, give up a goal right after you scored in the case of Clarkson, just not being able to close out good opportunities. Hamilton lets it run. On Kamara Stevens out for a North Carolina throw, which Pickett will again take. Moves it off for O'Sullivan. Latsko won by O'Sullivan and Kurtz in concert. It's Salon now for James. Matthias. James for O'Sullivan. Carson Pickett with space. Tries to pick out McDonald and on the bounce Harris will make the play. Really dangerous ball from Pickett. A lot of her services are so dangerous, but Harris allowing that one to bounce in front of her. Lots in store at halftime. We'll preview tomorrow's three matches as well as have highlights of both goals in this one and stats. That's what Lisa and I will have for you here at the break here from Wake Med. It's been a great first half both ways. Entertaining chances both ways. Lots to talk about for us. So we really like it. 
a really exciting first 15 minutes, and now these teams settling in, feeling out their opponents, trying to wiggle open the spaces. Siler for Spencer, low cross, punched out by Murphy. Oh, the first time Jasmine Spencer has threatened for Houston offensively. Early ball from Ricaro for Jess McDonald. Has Hamilton charging up the center. McDonald will play it across, it's deflected. And Siler will clear it towards the sideline. Hamilton running against a slew of dash defenders trying to find an open space. She goes near post, she goes far post. And then ultimately, right before McDonald crosses it in, Hamilton holds her run and moves backwards towards the penalty spot. And Jess McDonald trying to pick her out. Ricaro's shot is blocked. Yeah, the run was the right run. And it then the dash did a great job defensively. Both teams did what, did what they needed to do there. It, it was definitely a great run by Hamilton, but also McDonald to keep her eye on Hamilton, understand where she's going. That's the partnership and the relationship that you want from your forwards to just know where they're going to run, understand that Hamilton's going to do whatever she can to find the open spot. And as long as McDonald plays the ball there, Hamilton's going to do anything she can to get on it. Three minutes of stoppage time, largely from the collision between Casey Murphy and Shea Room. And of course, two goals to count for as well. Actually, a little bit less than I expected. Siler back now for Prysock. Turns it to Gabby Siler. Now Megan Oyster with space. Picks out Gamera Stevens in a cluster. Ball now chipped in, looking for Latsko. Fights, pick it off for it, gets it, shoots it, and just whistles it past the far post. Good pressure there in the late stages of this first half from Veronica Latsko. Great pressure from Latsko as this ball comes in. Pickett thinking she had more time than she does. Latsko just getting great positioning, elbowing her way towards the ball and the shot just not clinical enough, not on frame. You can see there just how warm it is for Veronica Latsko <laughs> and these players. <laughs> Definitely gonna need a dry jersey at halftime after sweating through this one in the first half. Stolen by Gomera Stevens, but she can't finish the job. Tough touch from Gomera Stevens. She can hone in that part of her game. She will be such a bigger threat for Houston Dash. We saw Gomera Stevens receiving the ball with three defenders on her, and she's able to dance her way out of that one. But in the open space, a rogue touch like that is a missed opportunity. Get a second chance here, Will Gomera Stevens. Across the foul, and O'Sullivan. Can't repeat what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> O'Sullivan clearly frustrated on the call. Gomera Stevens doing a nice job of shielding O'Sullivan at first, and then the second tug from O'Sullivan bringing Gomera Stevens down. Oyster and Hansen eyeing this one for Houston. Dangerous position here for Houston on this near side. Oyster with a serve towards the far post. Groom will lose out to Matthias in the end. All of the Houston players making the exact same run. No one coming late, no one cleaning up that far side for any garbage that sneaks through like we saw. Spencer for Groom. Be the final touch of this first half. So, Lisa, lots of talk about a goal both ways. Groom for Houston in the ninth minute, Hamilton for North Carolina in the 16th. What were your impressions of that half? North Carolina came out on the front foot, showing that they can score goals with a couple called back throughout this match. And then Houston able to pick off a pass and capitalize in their transition play where the dash is always so dangerous. Both these teams settling in towards the end of that first 45 minutes. It'll be interesting to see how they come out aggressive in this second half to get another one on the board. 
a back and forth first half. The second half will probably be much more of the same. Coming up here at the half, we'll preview the action tomorrow and take a look back at the first half. Stay with us on Paramount Plus. Second half here at Lake Med Soccer Park. Michael Minnick alongside Lisa Roman. And Lisa, it's been a busy week for coaching news here right before the Olympics begin. Lots of news. Casey Stoney being named the new head coach of San Diego, a team excited to join the NWSL in the 2022 season. And also for OL Reign, they are excited to name Laura Harvey. She's back with OL Reign. She coached there from 2013 to 2017, and she will now be the new head coach at OL Reign. So lots of moving pieces in the NWSL. It's good to see these women at the helm of some of these teams. It's going to be interesting to see kind of a, a mix of the old and the new, right? You still have Warren Barnes there. You still have Rapino there. Mm -hmm. Players that Laura Harvey's very familiar with. Then you also get to throw Mara Jean and Mesa Mer into the mix as well for her to coach. It will be exciting time in the NWSL and two teams joining in 2022 alongside San Diego. Also Angel City. So the league expanding, teams growing. It's really fun to see, Michael. I'm, I'm excited to be part of it. It'd be great to have that LA market back in. Got to go back to LA Soul days in WPS for <laughs> the last time that market had a team and they were good. Marta and company. I'm still pushing for a Philadelphia NWSL team. Bring that brand Let's back, go. absolutely. The independence. Underway here in the second half at Wake Med Soccer Park. Michael Minnick, Lisa Roman here with you. Got to start brainstorming with some nicknames for the Philadelphia NWSL mm -hmm. team, right? We'll get there. Here's McDonald playing it centrally. Shot from... Kristen Hamilton goes just wide. Nice early chance again from the Courage picking up where they left off in the first half. North Carolina Courage on the front foot in this attack as James pokes it forward to McDonald waiting on that flank. And it's that quick touch forward get, that gives her the space to get that cross in and Hamilton just chopping at that ball as she tries to send it towards goal. She did have two defenders on her. But I believe a, a runner coming in behind Hamilton, if she could just nutmeg that one, teammate behind her has a clear shot. I believe it was Salon. Mm -hmm. 11 sun change for these two. No subs made in the first half. It's Murphy, Pickett, Kurtz, Caldwell, Matthias, O'Sullivan, James, Salon, Ricaro, Hamilton, and McDonald for North Carolina. Houston sticks with Harris, Prysock, Naughton, Oyster, Hansen, Groom, Ogle, and Sauer in the midfield. Gamera, Stevens, Latsko, and Spencer up top. Right, it comes from Mathias, who's cross set up a Hamilton goal to tie this game in the 16th minute. Ricaro will try Mathias again. Mathias gets the cross off over Harris. The ball did go out of bounds on the way through. I'm not surprised to see North Carolina on the front foot here with possession. We, we took a look at those stats at halftime, Michael, and North Carolina owning the possession throughout the first 45 minutes. And coming out of this second half, to see them on the front foot is not surprising at all. For Houston Dash, they're sitting back. Can they control defensively a little bit more? But I'm really interested to see if Jasmine Spencer and Macomé Gomera Stevens can get more involved in the attack with Veronica Latsko dropping deeper into the midfield to receive the ball and help transition it for Houston up the field. And then Spencer, Spencer and Gomera Stevens occupying that wide flank space in behind Matthias and Pickett. Should note that the attacking sub Houston's made the last couple games, Michelle Alozzi is not here. Caught up by Nigeria in camp with them ahead of the World Cup qualifier. She's in Austria, which I'm sure is a little bit of a cooler locale than Houston <laughs> or Cary, North Carolina this time of year. But that shortens the bench that already is missing your national team players that are in, at the Olympics as well. Seiler gets it back. Plays it inside looking for Latsko. Cleaned up by Kurtz. Oh. 
Pickett. Houston now applying higher pressure on North Carolina, trying to win the ball back higher down the field. Turn inside from Hamilton. Good switch right from Mathias, who's been active in the first four plus minutes of this half. Going against Prysock, dumping it wide for McDonald. Jess McDonald's cross in low, deflected. It was Ogle doing the job coming back, out for a corner. Jess McDonald slowly floating out wide into the flanks. It's not a hard direct run. It's a, a slower jog for her, which makes it a little more difficult for Houston to keep track of her as she just floats to the width and the flank. She's receiving those balls and getting those crosses in. Now it's up for Hamilton, Salon, and Ricaro to see if they can crash the goal as McDonald has pulled so far wide in those moments. Third corner of the match for North Carolina. None for Houston so far. Lefty service from Carson Pickett. Driven in low, headed out. Defended very well there by Houston. Brinks will go out for a courage throw for Matthias. Broken up by Seiler. Picked up now by Kurtz for North Carolina. Beats one. Finds the feet of James. Angara James goes right. Matthias. Ricaro. Matthias trying to track this one down and can't. Out for a goal kick for Houston. Great defending by Jasmine Spencer as she's dropping back to keep track of Matthias coming out of the outside back position. Instead of sticking with Matthias as she runs down that flank, understanding that Presoff will pick her up behind her. Spencer dropping into the midfield to close off any through passes for Salon or James as they pop into that midfield. Salon dropping it back for Pickett, getting it back to O'Sullivan now. Matthias finding the feet of Hamilton. The goal scorer battling 23 against 23 against Prysock. Playing it through. Great ball for McDonald and just enough from Naughton to break that up. Vital touch from Katie Naughton. Great job by Naughton. Such good positioning as McDonald makes that run. McDonald turning her back on the ball, trusting that it will get through her. It's a really good look and a run by her. Room to Siler to Spencer on the right side of the box. Spencer, finally broken up by Caldwell. Quick feed there from Jasmine Spencer, but Caldwell, the second defender, able to close her down. Great job by Caldwell. We haven't seen a lot of 1v1 defending forced upon Caldwell throughout this game, but she did such a nice job there of providing coverage. And then as soon as Spencer beat the first defender, Caldwell sliding in there to break up the play and make a hard tackle. Just her second duel of the game through 52 minutes. Throw in into the box. Turn and shot from Latsko deflected. Camaro Stevens will try and keep it alive and will do so. Marked by Pickett. Basically just tried to dump it off of Pickett and did so. First corner of the match on the way for the dash. Smart play by Gomera Stevens. Draw the corner kick. Set piece opportunity here for Houston in their attacking end. They can capitalize on moments like these. Ogo took three corners last week against Chicago. Watch for Katie Naughton here. Already has two headed goals off set pieces this year. Ogle serve towards Broom, punched by Murphy as though two, those two meet once again after a nasty collision in the first half. Glad both players were okay after that one. Ogle will try again. Head it out by Pickett. Oyster short for Ogle. Across from Hansen. Prysock wins it for Houston. Finds the feet of Spencer. Great turn from Spencer. End of the box. Jasmine Spencer tries to go near post. And Murphy makes the save. Wanted to go quickly there. Wasn't able to do so, Casey Murphy. 
Good ball from Prysock. Great ball from Prysock. And the turn from Spencer so quick. She keeps the ball so tight to her. And Caldwell not stepping and closing down that space. Spencer able to get the shot off. But Casey Murphy, a big save. Great hands from her as she grabs that one. I think a really smart acquisition by Houston to bring in Jasmine Spencer. Earl Rain had a glut of attacking players. Jasmine Spencer was someone that was on the market and James Clarkson said, yes, please. And she has been a great piece for them during this break, especially. She has bringing Spencer in was a pleasant surprise for James Clarkson. He said she was really just up to speed with how he wanted the system to play and, and she just fit in really well with the pieces that they already had at the dash. And she is a nice addition to the front line, feeding off of Latsko, making those runs in behind. Nice combination here, but the flag is up once again on Kristen Hamilton. She's already had a gold disallowed, as has Jess McDonald by the flag in this one. Just one card so far in this one that was issued to Shea Groom after that aforementioned collision with Casey Murphy back in the 29th minute. Still have not seen a substitution in this one through 55 minutes. Going long for Spencer. Fighting for it as Latsko. Slid away by Caldwell for a throw in. Caldwell, another player stepping into the squad during this international stretch while players are gone. And for Paul Riley, he's excited about what Caldwell can bring to this team. This is only her fourth game in the NWSL, but the Irish International has played plenty of minutes abroad. And her pairing with Kaylee Kurtz in the back is really, really dynamic. The balance they have when Kurtz steps up to the ball and Caldwell can slide in as that second defender. Spencer trying to shake her here. Mathias is defending out for a corner. The other thing that's nice about bringing Diane Caldwell in is she's played college ball in the U.S., so she has the international feel. She also knows the American game from playing at Hofstra. Dasher starting to stack up a couple corner kicks now. Card there shown to Merritt Mathias. Mathias booked for the fourth time this year, so now she's in danger with the next yellow being suspended for a match. Service from the left side towards the far post. Headed, loose in the six, still being battled for. Finally cleared. Only as far as Ogle. He tries to go up the line for Spencer. Well defended by Matthias to just let it run for a goal kick. Good look by Spencer sliding over to that side, looking for that through ball But Matthias. Again, great defensive efforts by her. Visit nwslshop.com to find your club's latest gear. Support your favorite NWSL club with the latest tees, sweatshirts, hats, novelties, and much more. Love me some NWSL shop. Done a great job of putting out things that are, are out of your normal fare, your jerseys, your t-shirts. Enjoy the jacket, the flannel, lots of good stuff. I've swiped my credit card a few times on that shop. Courage under pressure, as you said, Lisa. Houston much more aggressive with that pressure up front here in the second half. At Houston applying higher pressure, looking to win the ball back sooner. It just puts pressure on Caldwell, Kurtz, Pickett, and Matthias in the back line, forcing them to be smarter with their decision making and trying to find James and O'Sullivan in that midfield unit. Got them a goal in the ninth minute. Let's go forcing the turnover, finding Groom. Gave the dash the lead, but Kristen Hamilton striking seven minutes later to tie it. Houston seeking their first point ever at North Carolina. 0-5 all time here. Headed on, looking for Gamera Stevens and Pickett. Just forced to guide it out for a corner kick. 
Great pressure by Gomera Stevens. That long ball over the top. She was never going to get to it. It wasn't in the right positioning. She didn't have the right step on Pickett. But by applying so much pressure to Pickett, forcing her to cause that ball to just be kicked out of bounds and then winning a corner kick for the dash. It's those smart press moments from Houston that we're seeing in this second half that we didn't see in the first half. This is about where we were with the dash last Sunday, right? Tie game, about 30 minutes to go. They weren't able to see that result off. We'll see if they can do better this time around on the road. Ogle's corner. Nice ball in, forcing the catch from Murphy. Latsko was in the area, and this time Murphy does get her quick distribution. Tackle, though, from Gamera Stevens to slow but not stop the attack. Hamilton on the move, has James with her, plays it for James. James will return it, but it's blocked. Again, good transition defense from Houston. Great job by Houston to get behind that ball, that quick step from North Carolina. We don't see too much, but Hamilton looked like she was off. Before we knew it, four or five white jerseys behind the ball, slowing down the play, and no whistle called. Really smart defensive efforts from Houston. You can see why Casey Murphy wanted to go quicker earlier that was able to really create something on that counterattack. If your goalkeeper is willing, able, and excited to move quickly in that transition, it always starts with the goalkeeper. She can see the field so much better. Here comes Shea Groom. Stood up by O'Sullivan and draws the foul right on the edge of the 18, and immediately a yellow shown here to O'Sullivan. Shea Groom with a head of steam, able to draw the foul in a dangerous position. Shea Groom with open space is so dangerous as she dodges around Caldwell, trying to get her foot in there, and O'Sullivan crashing in on that tackle as well. I'm not sure what O'Sullivan could have done there. Yeah, it, it looked like Caldwell got the ball cleanly. Yeah. And then O'Sullivan just getting her body in the way. It's almost as if O'Sullivan wasn't going for the ball at all, instead just trying to get her body in front of Groom, which is obstruction of the ball. Groom's over it. Ogle is over it. Siler is the player that's approaching here. Four player wall. Plus an outlier for Casey Murphy in North Carolina. Tension building here in a 1-1 game. It will be Siler striking and finishing. What a lefty strike from Gabby Siler. And the Dash are back in front. How do you like that for your first professional goal? Great set piece from Houston. As the two players in front move, it makes it so hard for Murphy to keep track of the ball. And it's struck so well by Seiler, keeping the ball low and sneaking it right in that far post. And look at this celebration. How excited and happy is she and all the players on the bench jumping to give her big hugs in that celebration. Again, Houston has never won, never tied at North Carolina. But now the Courage have work to do to keep that stat true. Gabby Slaver with a beauty. Houston scoring first in this match with a goal from Shea Groom. And just a few minutes later, North Carolina responding. Now the dash up again, a goal over the Courage. Can they keep this? We know that North Carolina will put on the fire right now. They'll put Houston under a lot of pressure, look to win the ball back, and step in on these transition moments that the Dash have. This will here behind the play. Matthias was fouled. We still have not seen a substitution in this game for 63 minutes. James. Can we take the free kick? Not sure why. Caldwell <laughs> doesn't Diane know either. <laughs> Plays the same, a short ball to James. 
Mathias. Again, if you're just joining us, North Carolina has had two goals disallowed because of offside calls. Houston has led 1 0, and now 2 to 1. Spencer. For the goal scorer, Siler. Plays a nice ball across. Cleaned up, played up the side. Hamilton now. Early ball for Ricaro, looking for McDonald, but Harris saw that all the way. Great read by Harris to come off her line. Try to scoop that one before McDonald even had a chance to run it down. We praise Carrie Ricaro a lot in the first half, rightfully so. She's not been on the ball much here in the second half. Houston's doing a nice job of not playing into the box trap in the midfield that North Carolina has. In the first half, they did that a lot. They tried to play through the center of the field, through the center of the pitch, not using their flanks like this play right here. Hanson's early ball, touched on by Latsko. Gamera Stevens, hard run towards the end line, plays it across. Mathias deflects it because Spencer was there. Spencer will actually track it down in the corner and regroup, but big touch from Mathias to keep that from being a tap in for Jasmine Spencer. Spencer goes down. No foul there, says Alex Billiter. We'll play on. Best stretch of the game for Houston. The goal notwithstanding, they've been very good the last five or ten minutes. They have. They're moving the ball much more cleanly. They're finding their teammates' feet. And like I mentioned before, they're not playing into the trap that North Carolina wants them to do. Instead of playing it into the middle of the field, to Ogle's feet, they're playing up the flanks of the field, or if it comes into the middle, it's a quick switch like we're seeing here as Groom got it, and then quickly pivots out to the other side. James Clarkson said this week that he really thought when his team got the lead against Chicago, they would finish it out based on the way the season's gone, the way they've played with leads. They couldn't do it. Obviously, two own goals, a little bit fluky, but he was really unhappy with how his team could not close the game out. Again, getting a second chance on the road against the first place courage and again we'll reset this for you if this result holds we'll have a four-way tie for first place entering play tomorrow man these standings are so tight in this regular season all bunched up but that's what makes it so exciting michael we've seen a lot of dominant teams the courage of course being the most recent one that have just run away the regular season it's not going to be the case this year it's going to be tight the whole way that's going to make for such a good postseason. And in the postseason play, it's not the top four teams, but the top six teams that make it into the playoffs. It's number one and number two spot getting a bye. So more opportunity for postseason play for these teams just to get above that red line in the standings. And there's all of this to be difference between home field and having to travel in that first round. They're centrally. Dangerous chance here. Turn from Hamilton stood up beautifully by Megan Oyster. Oyster will roam forward. Let's go, we'll check back. Oyster looking for help. Going back to Naughton. Good position there from Naughton to be an outlet. Gamera Stevens. It back against O'Sullivan. Short for Groom. He didn't come off for Shea Groom. Ricaro. O'Sullivan reading Groom's back heel play there before Groom even had a chance to make that pass. Kurtz will get forward now up the left side. Kaylee Kurtz from her center back position playing the early cross. Headed out. Katie Naughton has been well positioned for these early balls in North Carolina that was so successful in the first half. A lot of credit to Katie Naughton and Megan Oyster, center back pairing for Houston. They're playing very, very well together. We saw Oyster stopping that play development from North Carolina earlier, and then Katie Naughton just in great positioning. The angles that those two are finding show that they really balance each other so well when they're looking to move the ball in the attack. Groom. Gives it away. So here in a free kick and a yellow shown to Gabby Seiler immediately. 
her second yellow of the season. Tyler going into that tackle, cleats up. She did win the ball. We'll just take a look at Siler's foot as this ball's in the air. Cody Salon there. Yeah, right, right above in the, the kneecap. Knee. Yep. Ouch. So Houston adding on to their league lead in yellow cards. <laughs> Not a stat you <laughs> want to lead the league in. This North Carolina team by far had recorded the least fouls in the league. But today, it's been pretty even. Eight against the dash, six against the courage. Oyster turning it over. <laughs> just committing a, hey, I'm a little bit out of position. I'm just going to foul you, foul. After Houston's second goal from Siler in about the 62nd minute, Houston has done a nice job to maintain the intensity and keep momentum in their direction as North Carolina tries to win it back and push forward in their own attack. When Houston gets the ball, they're not rushing. They're being very patient, not playing it into where there's a cluster of blue jerseys instead, waiting patiently to find their open teammate who can receive the ball cleanly. Paul Riley refreshes attack down a goal. Haley Mays, who started last week, coming in place of Hunger Rod James. Meredith Speck also won. Today ends for Kerry Ricaro. So Mace on. Speck on. Ricaro off. James off. A good move from Paul Riley. We talked a lot about Kari Ricaro, who was that defensive presence in the midfield for North Carolina and now that they are down a goal. It's up to Mace to come in. Haley Mace, more of an attacking presence in that midfield unit for the Courage. So she, Mace, is she able to push forward into the attack, try to combine with McDonald and Hamilton up top. And now also having Speck in the midfield will provide a different look for the Courage and, and more pressure for Houston with the fresh legs. First two changes either way in this game. Siler, whose free kick is the difference in this one. Going back for Prysock. Siler again. It's got to give you so much confidence when you score a goal like that. You can tell Gabby Siler playing already with so much confidence after she scored that set piece goal. She's getting into the attack more. She's taking more risks with the ball at her feet. For example, turning Denise O'Sullivan there on the flank. Groom. Great touch to set up a chance, but well tracked by the fresh legs of Speck and Mace both. Good spot for it to have fresh legs as Groom has scored once and won the free kick the ledge of the second goal in a similar spot to where she was right there, right at the top of the 18. Great performance from her in her 100th NWSL regular season game, Shea Groom. A huge accomplishment for Groom. She's such a presence in this league and especially on this Houston Dash team. James Clarkson says that if she's playing at an eight out of 10, Houston will win the game. They will be successful. That goal, by the way, for Groom in the first half, her 30th goal in all competitions, 23rd in the regular season. She was so good in the run to the Challenge Cup last year. Hanson. the battle between the last regular season playoff winner, the fall, excuse me, the Challenge Cup winner from last year, going the way of the Challenge Cup winner from last year, Houston. Again, never gotten a result here in Cary. 0-5 all time. Let's go against Kurtz. Crosses it. Nobody home there at the far post. Spencer was the closest to it. Casey Murphy's not going to waste time putting this one back into play. Not a bad cross at, cross at all from Houston Dash as it floats towards the back post, but no one home. Spencer making that late tracking run. Groom in the ninth from Latsko. Hamilton tied it in the 16th. 
unassisted. Gabby Siler's free kick, the difference in the 62nd minute. We move into the final stages of this one here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Appeal from Spencer for a throw in, but it will be North Carolina's ball. Initially, now it will be given to Houston. Our sock will adjust the socks. Kill a couple seconds here. Turned over to Siler. Given right back to Matthias. Turn and run for Hamilton. Inside for Salon. Joining the attack now is Speck. Pick it now. O'Sullivan. Merritt Mathias. Turn inside from Salon. Ball to the top of the 18 for Haley Mace. Mace looking for McDonald. Tackle in there from Hansen. Right it comes for Matthias. Matthias with a dangerous cross, forcing Harris to make the play. And good recognition there from Harris to realize nobody's in front of me. I can just knock this down, kill a couple seconds, and pick it up. Harris assuring her teammates it's fine. I got it. For Paul Riley and this North Carolina squad, those subs have made a difference. He has Haley Mace in the attack, partnered up with Jess McDonald, dropping Hamilton back into the midfield. However, Hamilton playing that forward position for the majority of this game, she still has so much attacking energy left in her, so she will push forward very, very frequently, joining in with McDonald and Mace to find a combination play up top, getting the ball inside the center and then out wide. Can't find Matthias there, can O'Sullivan. Price Sock will just knock it long towards midfield. 50-50 hitter won by O'Sullivan over Jasmine Spencer and out for a throw in. We talked about Houston having good game management early on because of their high pressure situation, understanding when to pressure and when to sit back. Now it's up for the maturity of this team to know how to close out this game. They have the lead. Can they maintain it, keep possession of the ball, and not allow North Carolina to dictate the game? Hydration break here. First half we had a break because of the injury for Murphy. That functions as a hydration break, but get one here and again. Hydration break for Houston may be especially important. They've not made a sub yet on a very warm day in North Carolina. I understand why not. James Clarkson is happy with how his 11 are playing. They're really getting into a groove. And after that foul drawn by Shea Groom and finished by Ogle, we'll take a look at how we got to this point in the game. It was picked off by Houston Dash Latsko able to receive that ball in the midfield and finding Shea Groom on a beautiful slip pass. And just a few minutes later, North Carolina responding as Matthias sends this ball in and Kristen Hamilton waiting at the top of the six as it gets redeflected in through the box and ending up at her feet. And then in the second half of action, Shea Groom drawing the foul. And it's Emily Ogle finishing, or excuse me, Gabby Seiler finishing this one, which could be the game winner in this match right now, Michael. As I said, the first goal of Gabby Seiler's pro career. It might be a historic one, as I've said. Houston's never gotten a point in North Carolina in five tries. Six tries going much better. It's hard to come into an away stadium like this in Cary, North Carolina with the fans and the energy and the heat and the humidity which we are seeing tonight. Not that Houston doesn't know anything about heat and humidity. Certainly they do and gonna see a, a change here. I think just some fresh legs and speed here. You bring Taylor Smith in for Havana Salon. So much speed from Taylor Smith and that's exactly what it is, Michael, to add those fresh legs into the mix. Putting a lot of firepower up top is Paul Riley in that attacking end of the field. He's not happy at all with this score line. Just the second time Smith's played this year, by 21 minutes as a sub earlier this season. So three changes now for Riley and the courage. James Clarkson still has all his cards to play off the bench. 
Nice flick on. Immediately Smith into the action. Playing it across. It's a good ball and cleared. Taylor Smith ready to go as McDonald was there. Dash trying to organize as Smith gets on the ball again. Plays another nice cross, just a bit too tall. Second ball knocked in by Pickett and cleared by Seiler. Heck of a sub for Paul Riley bringing Taylor Smith in. She has energy. She's looking to prove herself and why she deserves more minutes on this squad. She gets on the ball quickly and making an immediate impact in the attack, sending those crosses, whipping them very dangerously into the box. Well, and I think this is a role that she needs to show she can play, right? You're not going to beat up Carson Pickett and Mary Mathias on many days in your natural position. So come in and make an impact offensively. Even securing that spot off the bench for Paul Riley's squad is so important. You can see how players coming in can turn the tide for this Courage team. Pickett's chip headed high. And as long as players can step in and jump right into the rhythm of the game, not miss a beat at all, and combine well with McDonald, you can earn yourself a spot. And someone that knows his system, too, from her first stint in North Carolina. Whistle here behind the play. That'll be the dash's ball. Just McDonald with some communication there and some signals. Tough battle between McDonald, Naughton, and Oyster. Battling for positioning on the field. The physical fight increasing as the clock winds down in North Carolina fighting to stay in this match. Too high there for Mace. Pretty good look from Haley Mace. She's receiving that ball. She's dropping off of Houston's back line into that center position in between the, the defense and the midfield for the dash, receiving the ball and turning. But if she can keep that ball down and get a better clinical shot on target, she's much more dangerous. Early ball for guess who? Taylor Smith. Low cross this time. Gets through several players. Chance here for Pickett, but right at Lindsey Harris. It's the kind of ball you dream to run on to if you're Carson Pickett. And I think she chose well to go low, maybe thinking she would get a deflection and didn't get it. Dangerous cross in from Smith, her third one now in succession. And as Carson Pickett makes that late run onto the ball, she strikes it with the instep of her foot. She was trying to keep it down, make sure to keep it on frame, just throw it into the mix. But if she can lock her ankle and strike that with her laces, just float it about three or four yards off the ground, it's so much harder for Lindsey Harris to try to save. I wonder, too, if part of the goal was to maybe get a ricochet off mm -hmm. of McDonald there. It was close to Jess McDonald. You could see McDonald at the very end there picking up her foot, trying to throw Harris off. Harris would assume McDonald would try to touch the ball, collect it, turn, and get a shot off. North Carolina has responded to going down 2-1. to one. A great push here in the final minutes of this one with fresh legs from Mace, from Speck, and from Smith. Kurtz now charging forward. Playing it over the top. Chance now for ha Hamilton, but she couldn't pick it up on the second touch. Not over to clean it up, but now a corner for the Courage. Crowd starting to sense it. Hamilton doing such a nice job of floating off of Seiler into that open space, but very solid defending throughout this entire game from Katie Naughton, and she does it again for the dash, sliding in to break up that play. Corner from Pickett. Gets through. Smith touching it back. Into the mixer. Loose now. Still loose. Cleared partially. Chested down by O'Sullivan. Right it comes now, nobody home in blue. Michael, it was Katie Naughton on both of those clearances. She got her head on it, flicking it out of the danger area initially on the corner kick coming in. And then as the scrum was happening right in front of the goal, it's Katie Naughton who is clearing that out. A phenomenal defender for Houston throughout this game, saving them a number of times. Combination here for Mace. Low cross in to fuck that on another corner. 
Naughton again. Great defending from Naughton. She's doing such a good job organizing the North Carolina men. They're putting on so much pressure. The fresh legs they have constantly attacking. Pickett will try again. Falls down, shot from Mace over. Couldn't get her weight over that one. A breather for Houston now as they reset on this goal kick from Harris. This is just the seventh time that North Carolina has conceded two or more at home. They've only lost at home five times in the regular season. Five times. Never to Houston. 5-0 and against the Dash here at Wakebed before today. Finally, a change on the way for Houston. Makame Gamera Stevens will make way. We'll see Jamia Fields. A nice game from Gomera Stevens occupying that right side flank, getting in behind, causing a lot of trouble for Carson Pickett, who got up and down the fields. And now Jamia Fields stepping in. She'll have to do a lot of defending as Pickett will continue to move down that field as North Carolina looks to get an equalizing goal late in this game. Fourth appearance, all as a sub for Field. She's played 48 minutes over those previous three matches. Ogle, looking long, but can't find Lats go. Throw in now for Kurtz at North Carolina. Immediately finds O'Sullivan. Or Matthias. Hit and hope time, especially we have McDonald as a target. Brought down by Mace, trying to shield and turn his Kristen Hamilton, but broken up. Gabby Seiler, the goal scorer with a good defensive play. Kelly Mace, a nice flick on finding Hamilton there. How about that from Smith, but she can't pick it up on the other side. It's really good individual efforts from North Carolina all over the field, but it's that final connection piece that they're missing as Mace flicks that ball on. Hamilton needs to be ready for it to receive it at her feet with composure. Reeve is always ready to come in as well. Day is done for Jasmine Spencer. And you had to figure when these subs are being saved up, this is what was gonna happen, right? Gonna kill some clock, get some fresh legs on, break up the rhythm, I think, just as importantly in North Carolina. Very exciting to see Brie Vasali back in that white jersey for the Houston Dash. She's been out with a left ankle injury the last few matches. Now getting some minutes today for Clarkson. Shea Groom charging forward. Groom into the 18. And Murphy will come out. Caldwell slowing down Groom just enough to allow her goalkeeper to come get it. Shea Groom so dangerous in the open field and could be a dangerous decision by Caldwell just to keep backing off and slowing Groom down. However, North Carolina tracking back to get behind the ball to ultimately stop Shea Groom's run. Groom will slow things down a bit. Go right, get some help. Hansen. This is a straight run to the corner <laughs> from Haley Hansen. Plays it across, gives it away to Kurtz. So you do the hard work to get to the corner and then you just basically give the ball away. Why don't you just shield the ball there? I don't think her intention was to get to the corner and shield the ball. We're in the 88th minute. There's still a lot of time left on the clock. Stoppage time hasn't been added yet. You don't have your teammates around you in that moment driving towards the corner. Smith it's just it wasting up. a lot of gas. Yeah, it's true, especially from your outside back. Smith now. Caldwell. Pickett has time and space as Houston will just drop in and defend. Early ball from Carson Pickett. Headed out by Siler. Pickett will try again. Whistle here. A stoppage for an injury here. Siler's the player down. What a goal she scored to Give Houston the lead. Free kick in the 62nd minute 
That's the difference in this one. Now for North Carolina in these final moments of this game where they're looking to get the late equalizer to stay in this matchup. For them, they're going to be very, very dynamic and creative up top. Houston understands and realizes that North Carolina is looking for the long ball over top, trying to find Jess McDonald and Haley Mace running onto it. Those crosses coming in from Pickett and Matthias. So can McDonald and Mace be more deceptive with their runs? They're really going to need to lose their defenders in Naughton and Oyster, which so far this game has not been easy. Player restarts with the drop ball. Pick it. To Hamilton. Speck. Give and go. Speck towards the 18. Meredith Speck has her pass blocked by Oyster. Pick it towards McDonald, headed down and wide, and a whistle here, pushing the back on Jess McDonald. Flag was up as well. We're in the 90th minute, have another change. It's Christine Naren coming on, the veteran, making her second appearance. Emily Ogle making way. Nittany Lion for a Nittany Lion. Great defensive game from Emily Ogle. She did such a nice job sitting in that deep six position for Houston, breaking up the passes, receiving the balls, and being that pivot person, switching it from side to side. Now as Naren comes in, giving defensive directive from James Clarkson on the sideline to close out this game for Houston. That was a Naren level free kick from Gabby Sauer earlier in this game. Five minutes of stoppage time. We're into it now. Top fly, headed by Naughton. Speck now gets a head on. Head 10 is finally settling at the feet of McDonald who drops it back. Matthias, pressured by Vizali. Fouled by Bree Vizali. Kurtz, Pickett. Righty ball in towards the top of the 18, towards McDonald, knocked down by Siler. O'Sullivan will win it for North Carolina. Mace. Against Hansen, takes the shot, but right. And Lindsey Harris, with McDonald waiting for the rebound, but Harris didn't give one up. Really good look by Haley Mace as she receives that ball. She attacks the front foot of the defender, forcing Houston on their heel. And Mace, with the space, can get a shot off. She's given them a different dimension with that longer shot attempt. She's tried a couple. How about this turn from Hamilton? Pass inside. McDonald off the bar! Speck now. Matthias on her horse can't run it down. What a chance for Jess McDonald to tie this game in stoppage time. It's the different look for North Carolina. Incredible turn by Hamilton as she just spins the defender. And Jess McDonald getting her toe in there to keep that ball mo moving towards the goal. Lindsay Harris thanking that the crossbar was there. Goalkeeper's best friend. A crossbar and two goals disallowed by offside for North Carolina. A frustrating night for their attack, but still time to fix it. Pick it. Bad ball for O'Sullivan. Vizali would just clear. Out comes Casey Murphy. Halfway through the five minutes of stoppage time. Matthias. Smith, nice ball. Layoff looking for O'Sullivan, just a little bit too short. Header won by Caldwell. Pressure from Latsko against the two center backs, and Kurtz will be forced back to Murphy. We're seeing a rotation of attack from North Carolina. Long distance shots. Low, hard driven balls in, lofty crosses, and then shots trying to come down the middle of the park. Cross in, play made by Harris at the near post. She'll cover up in front of McDonald. By the Courage constantly having different methods of attack and being so creative and dynamic, it's forcing Houston to be engaged and turned on, not just clearing the ball out. 
but instead being aware of players all over the field because with North Carolina doing this type of attack, you never know where the ball is going to come from. Let's go with the pressure. A belated foul call against North Carolina and Caldwell. Good work from Latsko. Great track back from Latsko. Defending from her striker position in the center three against Caldwell. See the leadership and encouragement there from Christine Nairn for Latsko. Latsko tracking back to defend this one. Caldwell coming in hard with the tackle. Taking out the legs of Latsko in that one. Looks like Caldwell got part of the ball, but majority of her legs were taking out Latsko's feet. Lasali will head towards that left corner under pressure from Matthias. Smith coming over to help too. And it will be a Houston throw. Smith tried, but that was pretty clearly <laughs> going to be the dash's ball. He also will take it and get a yellow card for her trouble. She might have been shown to Bazali instead. Time wasting. Delay of game. Yep. Corner for Latsko and Houston. In the waning stages of this one. Taking short for Naren. And that is the final whistle of this one. So for the first time, the Houston Dash not only get a point at North Carolina, they get a win at North Carolina, Lisa. Three points for the Houston Dash jumping them up the standings for this regular season. 13 points to 16 points. Incredible job by Houston. They got the early goal. They did concede one to North Carolina, but able to hold out this lead. Incredible set piece goal coming from that player right there, Siler. Great game from Houston all over the park. Yeah, great free kick from Gabby Siler too. And North Carolina, their second straight loss of the season. Back to wrap this up with highlights and analysis after this. You're watching the NWSL on Paramount Plus. <laughs>